Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Uh, in this video is going to be uh, how I sculpted this Okapi face. Um, so I haven't made this before and I kind of wanted to start a series of um, like animals that people may not know. So the first one I'm starting off with is an Okapi. Um, so this will just be the sculpting video, uh, how I sculpted the head. So I started off with some glass eyes and these are just glass ca cabochons. Um, and I am painting them up uh, just a black color because Okapis have like a little, you can't have black eyes really. Um, so I'm just using some water-based acrylic paint to paint the back of it, uh, let it dry, and then I can insert them into the um, head. Uh, the next thing I'm doing is using a foil base for my sculpture. Uh, by using a foil base, that means you use a lot less um, clay, and you also makes it also makes the sculpture a little bit lighter as well. So something to always keep in mind when you're um, making a doll and what type of armature you're using is how heavy the parts actually are. Um, so I always try to make them as light as possible, um, hence using a foil inside. And I've never really had a problem with using foil either um, uh, in the baking process or anything. Never, never had a problem with it. So what I've just done is, is I've covered the the foil with some Sculpey Original. I like to use Sculpey Original just because I like the way it um, is a, a little bit softer than um, Super Sculpey. Uh, Super Sculpey tends to be a bit harder uh, and it's that beige coloured one uh, while this one's a white coloured and it's, it's it's a little bit softer and it, more malleable to work with and I tend to like to work with softer clays over hard clays. Um, that's why I work with Monster Clay as well because you can melt it and make it uh, pretty soft um, so I tend to go for the Sculpey original but you're you're welcome to use whatever you want you can also get Sculpey firm as well um, and that one is really difficult to work with you have to have some strong hands and some patience for that one so what I'm doing is I'm sort of blocking out how I want the head to look and blocking out the snout area. If you look at Okapi's um, structure, they kind of look like a giraffe, the head that is. Um, so it's a little bit different than a horse and a deer. It's um, like a, a zebra giraffe. <laughs> And I haven't really made anything like that before, so this was a whole new uh, experience, I guess. Um, so what I tend to do when I sculpt is I like to get a groundwork done first and get the shape of the head done properly. Um, and then I'll start working on the eyes and, and, the, and the mouth area. Um, I always try to focus on the eyes a little bit more because sometimes they tend to be a little bit difficult to um, to get right I guess and to get symmetrical um, so I tend to use a ball tool um, I have a video on my patreon uh, going through all of the tools that I use uh, so if that's something that you're interested in it's for uh, five dollar and up uh, tiers so there's a whole heap of different things on there uh, as well that you can look at and you get access to um, but if you're looking for a sculpting tool video there is definitely one on there so I've inserted the glass eyes into the spot that I think it should be making sure I have uh, the direction and the, the symmetry of the eyes done <laughs> in the right place uh, I then create like a little worm and I build it around the eye so this will generally becomes like the eyelid area and then once I'm happy with the eyelid area I sort of build up around the eye um, because a lot of bone structures have a much broader brow so um, I tend to work on that um, after I've put the eyes in place and I'm happy with their placement and another thing I should mention is usually my dolls end up really, really big. So I didn't want this one to be big and uh, I successfully sculpted something smaller. Uh, so this be one of my smaller dolls, but it will be original one. I'm not actually casting it uh, or molding it in silicon and then casting it in resin. I'm not doing it for this one. So it will be a completely original, one of a kind hand sculpted doll. Um, it may be priced a little bit more just because it is a one of a kind hand sculpt one um, so I think I might go with that um, in terms of me doing like strange animals um, I think I might stick to that sort of theme of having a one-off piece um, but anyway let me know in the comments if that's something you like or think it's a good idea let me know your thoughts about that 
Anyway, moving on to these little horn things. So just like a giraffe, um, the okapi has like these little horns um, on their head. Uh, they're not like horn horns, they're like covered in skin and um, kind of like a giraffe. Um, so I put them on and just sat with the placement of it for a little while to see if I was happy. Uh, and then I, in, in the meantime, I just sculpted out some of the nostrils with a little, like a pick tool, um, which is really, really handy. And then um, I'm adding in these tiny little teeth. So in a couple of reference photos that I had, uh, I saw that Okapi's teeth kind of stick out a little bit. So I wanted to capture that and just make it a little bit different. Um, so I added in two little front teeth, um, something I didn't know until I actually started to uh, look at reference pictures. So um, yeah, I couldn't recommend looking at reference pictures enough uh, to get to know how an animal structure is. Uh, I do it all the time with anything that I sculpt. I make sure I study the animal's um, structure and any um, characteristics it has so I can replicate it in my sculptures. So I've just built up the bottom jaw a little bit more uh, just to shape it out a bit and so it looks a bit more like an okapi and then I'm using this little tool to, uh, it's like a little loop tool to add some details at the bottom uh, in terms of the detailing and what I normally do is furring further face. Um, I have a couple of ideas of what I want to do because the okapi doesn't use, it doesn't have fur, it has like kind of like a horse pelt. Um, I found like a minky fabric that will work really well for okapi um, for the body. Uh, it will have to be hand sewed I think uh, so I'm going to do a different technique. That entire process will be available over on my Patreon in the coming weeks as well so that's also something if you're interested in learning how I did the body the whole thing's more like a trial um, I've done the trial once before on another doll so I was pretty happy with the way it turned out so again I'm gonna try it with this doll um, and see if I like the way that one's turned out as well and again it'll be available um, on my patreon if that's something you're interested in so working on the ears it's always difficult to get ears symmetrical but ears aren't always symmetrical anyway uh, so it's always a struggle to keep that in mind that not everything on a face is symmetrical uh, faces aren't symmetrical so that gives you a little bit of leeway to play around with um, structure and uh, don't be too hard on symmetry in the way you sculpt uh, my ears always tend to be different um, different shapes different directions different sizes um, but I think I'm okay with that. <laughs> um, so what I did is like I rolled out a little uh, circle, pressed it down and then pinched the end of it and rolled it into a shape of an ear. I then added it onto the back of the head and I used a little worm to go around the ear just to get it, give it a bit more um, structure and a bit more um, uh, like more of a base for it to stay on the head. So sometimes when you end up um, molding the clay into the other clay, you end up losing a bit of detail and losing um, the way things look. So I always tend to add a little bit more clay just to build it up a little bit more. And I could start sort of uh, doing a more refined sculpt uh, to the face now that I'm happy with the way the structure looks. Uh, so in the process of refining things, I tend to give or take uh, the clay. So if things need to be built up, I'll add a tiny bit of clay. If things need to be subtracted, I'll use a rake tool to uh, like carve it out and get rid of the clay. So, well, yeah, I'm basically just going around and refining the way things look, um, refining everything around the eyes as well. I always have a particular way I do eyes when I sculpt things. I don't know if it's noticeable in my work or not because I look at it all the time it kind of just looks normal to me so I never really notice uh, if my sculpting has a specific look to it um, but I guess it does. And then now I decided that I was going to add uh, some veining effect to it because in a lot of the reference pictures they had um, some veins on their snout area. I don't know how well it's going to portray in the final version, whether I paint it or I add some of that flocking to it. No, I'm not sure about it just yet. Um, 
I'm going to do some experimentation and see what I like because uh, everything can be undone or repainted um, but yeah I'll, I'll give it a go and I'll keep you posted with what I end up going with um, so I'm just going over the head with my little loop tool and just making things as smooth making sure things are smooth and uh, that everything's symmetrical as well and I might do a separate video uh, on glass eyes. Um, I'm not sure whether I'll do it on Patreon or not. Maybe it might be a Patreon exclusive thing. But just a little tip when you're baking things with glass eyes is uh, to bake it a little bit lower. And that way you will find that you uh, have less risk of your glass cracking. I bake mine quite low for longer just to make sure that never happens. And I've never really had a problem with that. So I'm coming up to finishing the sculpture. I'm going to bake it for maybe around half an hour, uh, considering how small the head is and that it has glass eyes. So if you have any questions, um, let me know in the comments and I will try and answer them. Uh, like I said, you can check out my Patreon if that's something you're interested in. I have plenty of things and tips up there. Uh, and also my shop at creaturesofnat.com. This little one will be available um, in the coming weeks. Just keep an eye out on my social medias at Instagram and Facebook at Creatures of Nat and I'll probably catch you in the next one. I have a whole lot of new things coming up so catch you then. Bye!